Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're going to take a look at trims on OpenTX. Hey, if you like the work that I do here on RC Video Reviews and you'd like to help support the channel, you can join me on Patreon. I've got a couple of different levels of support. They all offer their own unique perks and benefits, most of them tied to inside information and early access and early previews and that kind of thing. So if you'd like to help support the channel, join me on Patreon, that'd be great. I also want to let you know I've recently opened a Discord server and the link for that will be on the screen right about now. If you've never used Discord, don't be afraid. Just click on the link, join up and hop in there and just go to town. It's a really easy going group of people and we're trying to get it off the ground. So the conversation so far has been interesting and you can participate any time of the day or night. Okay, let's get into the content. If you've spent any time poking around in OpenTX, you probably notice there's a lot of different options when it comes to trimming your model. And I'm gonna cover what the main categories are today. What I don't wanna get into is a pros and cons discussion about whether or not you should use trim. I know some people are purists and they argue against it. I, I get all that, but that's not what today is about. What today is about is just showing you the radio capabilities. If you guys want to talk about the aerodynamic benefits and the geometric benefits of linkages and correct trim, hop in Discord and let's talk about it there. But as far as the video goes, this is really just intended to show what the radio can do. Normally I like to show you guys configuration options in OpenTX, but there are some things that are just easier to demonstrate on the radio. So let's flip over to the radio and start there. The first thing that I want to cover is an option called display trims. So from the main screen, if you hit the model button, and you scroll down, you'll see an option down here called display trims. And that can be a little bit confusing if you haven't played with it. What display trims does is it's referring to the change or the numeric value of the trim when you trim the plane. So right now you can see my display trims is off. And when we go back to my home screen, you'll see that there are no numeric values in the trim sliders, either for the throttle or the rudder or the ailerons or the elevator. No, no numerics there. So if I highlight display trims and click on it, I'll get to toggle through three different options. The first one is already selected and that's no. The next one is change and the next one is yes. When you have it set to no, you get no numeric value on the main screen. If you set it to change and click enter, go back to the main screen and you can see I still have no numeric values on the screen, nothing here. What happens when you have display trim set on change is every time you move the trim, the radio will display the trim value momentarily in the trim bar and then it goes away. See how it just went away? So if I trim, I get a number real quick and then it disappears. That's what trim change does. Anytime you make a change to the value of a trim, the trim value is displayed in the trim slider for a moment and then it goes away. The next option is yes, and what that means is that you want the trim value to be displayed at all times. Simple as that. So when you go back to the main screen, you'll see that if you have trim centered on a control, there is no value, but as soon as you move off center, the value is displayed right there in the slider permanently. All right, the next thing I want to cover is trim steps. And if you haven't used this before, it's actually a really cool functionality in OpenTX. Under trim steps, you have five different options. You've got course, medium, fine, extra fine, and exponential. And we'll go through them, I'll show you what they do. What happens when you're on course for trim steps is that every time you move the trim, the trim switch moves eight steps at a time. So watch what happens when I move to the right. And this is why we did display trims first, because I wanted you to see the numeric values on the screen when we increment the trims using the different values for trim steps. So I'll move the trim to the right one, and you can see it's stepped eight. The next one is 16, and then 24 and so on, 32 and so on. Okay, so coarse goes eight steps at a time, medium goes four, fine goes two, and extra fine goes one. I'm not gonna go through them all, I'll just show you what extra fine does, so I'm just scroll over to extra fine, we'll do that one, and then we'll do exponential. So I'm on extra fine now, which means that every time I press that trim button, it's gonna increment by one number only. So there's one, two, three, you get it? So 35, 36, 37, you get the idea? So by using extra fine, we only increment by one. You might say, well, John, what the heck is the point in doing all this? The way I use this is when I go made in a plane, I'll normally set it on medium or coarse. Bigger planes, I use coarse. Smaller planes, I use medium. And then after I've got the plane dialed in, I'll copy my trims to sub trims, and then I'll change the trim stepping to something like fine or extra fine, again, depending on the size of the plane. 
Have you ever been out flying and you, you got the plane flying close to straight and level, but you trim down a little bit and it dives, but then when you trim up, it climbs. You just can't seem to find that middle step. Well, this is why you go in and set your trim step to something different, something a little lighter. You get more granular control over what's going on with the trim on the plane. Okay, let's take a look at exponential. An exponential is just what you think. As you get closer to the edge of the travel, the steps get greater and greater. So right now you can see I'm only about a quarter of a way through the trim travel, but I'm going to go ahead and start moving it and watch what happens as I go. So there's 47 and then 59. You see how I went from 10 to 12 and now 15. You get the idea. So as we get closer to the end, the travel for the trim becomes very dramatic for each step. And then as you get closer to the center, the trim steps get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're only going down by two now by one. So you get the idea. It's an exponential curve. It just it just looks like an exponential curve. It just goes starts flat and then it goes up as you get toward the end. So that's exponential. You can try that if you want. I've never really flown with it that way. That seems to me to be kind of dramatic, <laughs> maybe. So I've never I've never flown with it that, that way. But that's what it does. The next thing I'd like to cover are extended trims. But before I go any further, I want to point out that all my trims have been zeroed. Notice that every one of the trims are zeroed out. Let's bring up the channel monitor so we can get a baseline look at what goes on with the trims in the standard configuration. So I'll click model and then model again. We'll do a quick deflection test just to show what we've got here. We've got on the aileron a full 100 to negative 100, on the elevator a full negative 100 to 100, and then on the rudder also a full 100 to neg negative 100. Okay, now watch what happens when I use the trim and deflect the trim for the aileron all the way to the left. Watch the output here on the channel monitor. Okay, so negative 23 is as far as it lets me go. Elevator, I'm going to do the same thing. Negative 23, and then rudder, same thing. 23. So the radio stops us at 23. I thought it was supposed to be 25%, but whatever. 23% is fine. That's good enough for demonstration purposes. Now, if we go back to the main screen, you should see the sliders at their full deflection. So you see how the sliders are all the way to their fullest travel extent on the GUI. All right, fully extended. Now, here's where extended trims come in. Extended trims let you actually run, use the trim to run a surface the full length of the output. So we'll go back into the model setup and I'm going to turn on extended trim. Now, watch what happens when we go back to the main screen. Look at my trim tabs are no longer at the extent of travel. You see that? They used to be all the way to the end, but now they're not. Because now the trim tabs can actually move the control surface the full range of the servo output. Well, let's go back into the model monitor and take a look at what that looks like. So my aileron was at negative 23. Now watch what happens. I can keep going now. You see that? I go all the way to negative 98. I don't know why it doesn't give me the 100, but it doesn't. And same thing with the elevator. It stops at 29. It'll stop just momentarily, but all you got to do is push it again, and it goes right on through. Now, in this mode, what's going on is your aileron is going to be fully deflected, and so will your elevator, fully deflected. You have no more travel, so you, you can't go. If you wanted to go more left, you can't. That's a full left. So that one's a little risky and I would be careful using that, but that's what extended trims does. For the next segment, we're going to talk about sub trims. Before we do that, I've reset all my trims to zero and I turned off extended trims. So let's just say this is our airplane and we're going to go out flying and we go out and we decide, yeah, the aileron needs a little bit of this and oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that was exponential. And then my elevator needs a little bit of this. You know, that looks good for the elevator. And then my rudder needs a little bit of that. Again, I don't want to get into a debate about why you should not fly with an airplane trim like this. Let's save that for another day. But let's just say that's how your plane is set up. So you notice that I've got a little bit of up elevator. I've got a little bit of right aileron and I've got a little bit of left rudder. Okay. That's the, that's the trim. Now the idea behind sub trims is to give you back the full range of your trim. So if I go into model settings and I go over to output, notice that the trim values under outputs are all zero right there. You see these zeros, they're all zero. If I scroll left one, you see how I've got this trims to sub trims. What's going to happen is when I press and hold this, it's going to copy my trim values to sub trims and then it's going to zero my trims. So I'm going to press and hold this. There we go. And now I go right. And now notice that I've got 
trim values in the first four fields, not the throttle. I didn't set a trim on the throttle, but the aileron elevator and rudder, they all have trim settings now or sub trim settings. And when I go back to the main screen, all of my trims are now reset. So I, that, what that means is I've got full range of motion from, for my trim switches again. So it's like putting your trims somewhere else. It's really important to know that trims and sub trims do the same thing. They change the starting point for your servo. We're going to talk about some of the impacts of that in just a minute, but I did want to point out that a trim and a sub trim do the same exact thing. The only real benefit of copying your trims to your sub trims is that you get full range of your trims back. And by the way, any changes you make from here, right? Any, anything that you do here, say you go out flying again on the second flight and you trim it up a little bit more and you're, you're comfortable with that now, when you go back into your model settings and go to the output screen, you can just copy your trims to sub trims again, and it'll add or subtract as necessary. So notice how we've got five, 3.5 and negative 0.5. When we go back up to trims to sub trims, it'll do whatever math is necessary to adjust accordingly. Okay. And now we're back to zeroed out trims on the main screen again. Okay. So that's sub trims. In just a minute, we're going to go back to the desktop and we're going to look at a little graph. But before I do, I want to show you some things on the outputs menu that you're going to want to pay attention to. And I'll also show you what they look like in companion. And it's this very last field. So when you look at this very last field, there's a little delta triangle that refers to what's called sub trim mode. Notice the default is the delta triangle. If you click on it, it'll go into what's called linear mode or it'll flip it back into delta mode. Let's go take a look at what the difference between those two modes is. It's probably going to be easier to explain what happens when you're in linear mode first. So let's just say, for example, you put it in linear mode, which is the equal sign, and you move your sub trim up to 20%. What's going to happen when you move your stick in one direction is that as the stick moves, you're going to hit the servo limit right here on this line. That's the servo limit. So as you move your stick, you're going to hit that servo limit, but you're still going to have stick movement. You're going to be able to keep moving the stick, and that's what's represented by this graph. And then likewise, on the other side of center, as you move the other direction, what's going to happen is your servo is still going to have 20% movement, but you're going to run out of stick. In the delta mode, when you move your sub trim up to 20%, what's going to happen is even though the servo travel is shorter on this side, they use a little bit of math so that your stick and your servo both stop moving at the same time. And on the other side of the line, even though the travel is much longer, they still map the stick input to the servo output. Now you might say, well, there's one more line and that's the green one. And the idea behind that line is that you can also move the center of your PPM sweep. And in that case, if you decide to move your center down to here, notice what's going to happen. You're still going to have that issue where the stick is going to stop and you haven't extended the full movement of the servo. You still have from here to here on servo movement that didn't occur, but because you simply move the center, the servo will stop at this point. So it doesn't make its full travel. On the other side of the stick movement, you kind of have a little bit of a problem because the stick is going to be able to push the servo past its limit. So this area right here is a danger zone. You can overdrive your servo and cause a problem. So if you know what you're doing, you could probably use PPM center shift to decent effect without having any exponential changes in the delta mode. The delta mode is a nice simple way to address what happens when you move your center and you no longer have equal movement of the servo matched up with the stick on either side of zero. So the radio does the math for you and effectively you wind up with an expo curve. Before wrapping up this segment, it's worth pointing out that one of the reasons purists will say you shouldn't use trim to correct efficiencies like that, that you should mechanically fix them with linkage adjustments and things like that, is because when you use trim, this happens. It doesn't matter that this is a sub trim chart. You still have the same issue if you use trim on the plane. You get to a point where you start using trim and you're limiting the amount of movement you have on one side versus the other. And that's kind of the key takeaway here. Look how much longer that line is from center than this line. That's the problem. That's one of the problems. That's all I've got on trim settings with OpenTX. I hope you liked the video and that you learned something. Please make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit that notification bell, check out my affiliate links, and don't forget to check out the t-shirt store if you need a swanky new RCVR t-shirt for the next field day. That's all I've got for tonight, guys. Take it easy. All right, the next thing I wanna show you are extended trims. And the best way for me to do that is to go on the model, 
the next thing I want to walk, the next beep, 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 beep. So I'm going to go into the model monitor now. We're going to go into the, we'll bring up the channel monitor and I want to just, all right, let's bring up the, all right, let's bring up the channel monitor so we can get a baseline under. I'm going to move my aileron stick over and you can see I've got full 100 to 100.